remember you're just like quite chapter, then, but that's true. Long yeah, so away. You'll be at Arsenal soon. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather sit here? Yeah. 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 I'm going to say you're not sitting on my knee, are you? No, well, I don't really want to be in on it. Naomi's not really a football fan. She's, um, <laughs> we've been married 57 years, so she's sort of beginning to get a little bit used to the idea. I've got, I've got, I've got a girlfriend for four and a half years, and she's not into football, but sometimes it's nice to keep the two. Yeah. Yeah. She, she would occasionally come with me mm. and she had the time of her life when we went to um, Grove Ray's Hotel and I got Football Fan of the Year in 2010 so the Football League paid for us to stay overnight at the Grove Ray House. That was brilliant. Oh you enjoyed oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Was brilliant. Well, it was like there's all this, I'd like a kid in a sweet shop, there's all these faces, you know what it's like you think, I recognise them but couldn't put a name to them. Mm. Quite a few referees I booed as I went by. But, um, <laughs> uh, Grandpa was there and managers from All right. managers from uh, uh, 72 league clubs and, and, that, and uh, yeah. so there were nearly a thousand people there. And it was very, uh, we couldn't believe it, but we loved it, didn't we? We certainly did. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, there was a man on our table. He said. Um, uh, and there was a friend of the year on our table, and the, the guy on our table said, um, right, he said, and he introduced himself, I can't remember who he was, he said, uh, I'm hosting this table, and he said, the wine is on me, all the drinks are on me. And we didn't have to pay for any drinks, or and we had a, a really lovely meal, didn't we? We did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, sounds fantastic. It's nice when you get events like that, and especially to see so unexpected. It was so yeah. unexpected, yeah. yeah I, I, nominated but it was mainly nominated because a lot of overseas people what I do after every league home game well, I'm a bit past going away games now um, I go onto the internet and I even like a late night game mm. I just sit on my computer and I write a fans I view exactly how I saw it, you know oh, you saw the criticism game. of the referee criticism of the players praise of the players and I just tell them as if it was they were at the game mm. and it goes out to 32 countries where there are Saints fans exactly. and they when they heard that you could nominate someone they all nominated me and said Fantastic. why That's and then funny. the football club put in a nomination because they thought it was, uh, I was 79 at the time and they said I was still doing stadium tours which I still am 81 and uh, I do a lot of work with the Chernobyl children and all that. All those people sort of came in on that. And Tony Sealy, he was a mm -hmm. lad that used to be in a youth club I used what we used to run and he was an apprentice at the Dow and uh, he's now manager of Hong Kong you know, the the Hong Kong sporting club in Hong Kong. And he um he sent a nomination and uh, I did get to see it and uh, he said we were the mum and dad that he didn't have because he oh. come all the way down from Newcastle. Oh, so oh. All those sort of things, and it was it was quite an emotional weekend, wasn't it? It was. But, um, mm. well, that's what makes football a special thing, it is, and, and for you to keep fans who don't live in the country in contact with your club that's and right. the game. Mm. I, mm. I can see that that's really quite a special thing. Yes, well, yeah, and yeah, they appreciate it. They that. appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. They yeah. really and do. And when yeah. I went, to, um, when I mean, and there must be Pompey fans clubs all over the world because I'm with the naval connection. Yeah. I mean, sailors sort of, they, you know, well, they got a girl in every port. Every port. They, they probably, <laughs> they probably got a girl in every port now. So, I mean, some of them probably married and moved out. Yeah. And, and that's why I suppose there must be a load of overseas Pompey fans. Yeah, yeah there is. It's quite you, you, you attract more when you're in the premises, yeah. mind you. But um, some we some of our sort of stayed loyal. And we've actually got an Italian state supporters club. Oh it's got an Italian MP in it. Really? Yeah. That's quite uh, something. Yeah, yeah. mafia, I do think. But they've been over on a tour, and I've taken them in, and you know, some of them did look a bit. Are you are you recording? Dodgy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, typical sort of, you know, and I thought, well, are they the mafia? You know, <laughs> and, uh, That's the beauty of football, though. You meet people all walks of life. 
Yeah. That's the yeah. thing that's always come. You can you can be a dustman post and whatever, and then you can be a yeah. high judge, and you can be set together in the stands, yeah. still screaming and shouting because it's the passion yeah. inside you for your club right. that comes yeah. out. Yeah. And that, that's what I love about it. It brings, it brings everybody everyone to one level. To one level. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm. Um, I I'd say that take the start ten years ago when we moved to St Mary's. We, we bring the, ch the noble children over and we give them a day at the club, which I've organised since the club opened. And even though they can't speak the language, particularly the boys, they go down to the training ground, they get a football, they see somebody, even if it's an apprentice you or, you know, in a football shirt, and they're, they're, they're could we give a water stage for anyway? They get them to sign it and uh, they don't know whether they're talking to, uh, yeah, I mean, a young Theo Walcott or when they were talking to somebody in the first team, it didn't matter to them. They just loved the football and um, I could say Mike covers all, all age. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, you, the things know, are there. Don't, you don't have to worry about speaking their language. Yeah. No, I've, I've noticed that a couple of times. I've done a few things for like in the community and things, being the schools yeah, and stuff, yeah. and I've been asked to go along in all my gear because yeah. they find that sometimes they think that because the bloke with tattoos, like, because mm. I've, I've done a lot of reading things because yeah. of the bookshop connection yeah, and I've read yeah. stories and it's really funny because there's a couple of schools I've been to and the kids one, 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 there was this one particular one there was this kid he didn't want to read didn't want to read at all he was right little Herbert teachers yeah, couldn't get sorry that's my name Herbert Herbert <laughs> it's a bit of Herbert, Herbert. 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 Yeah. oh you don't get any trouble yeah. off yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't carry on yeah, yeah. anyway yeah. They, they, they couldn't get him to read he just wouldn't have it with teachers everybody anyway he saw me in school reading this bit of thing blah 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 and to cut a long story short he went up to another teacher and said I want to start a read he said oh that's pretty he said it looked pretty cool with that with, that, with John Westwood reading and after yeah. that and they were absolutely gosh, it had been trying for years, yeah. and he just That's didn't want it because he thought it was uncool. Because yes. yes. it was a gadget yeah. world, That's and he thought right. books were old fashioned. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 And but if you could do it, then he yeah. can do yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. I've had a couple of examples right. when I've gone down to the study centre and done things for yeah. the because they do things for the underprivileged yeah. kids oh, or the troublesome right. kids. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives you, it's nice to give some, like you say, it's it's the look on their face and football is the language and it it can have a big impact on people's lives, especially young. Yeah. yeah, that's why, like I was saying, I wanted to meet you because I love your passion. You know, I think that if we were to take passion and you know, support out of the game, I'm, I wouldn't want to see a game with all home supporters. No, I just no. wouldn't go. No, you no. need that banter. <laughs> but what does worry me a little bit is that it's an age around a real hate, isn't it? And I think we we need to have this you know, vibrant sort of um, dislike, if you like, for each other and, and this need to sort of, you know, to win. I mean, I'm sure every Pompey fan is quite happy as long as they're above us in the league, exactly. hopefully a league above, and that's it, and that we that they win every time they play us. And that's how I feel. You're singing off the same hymn sheet as me. Yeah. I love the rivalry, I love the banner. If you didn't, like you say, if you didn't have opposing fans in the ground, it would be sterile. It would be yeah. sterile. Absolutely the whole no point, point the whole point of football and, and what gets a team to play better is that atmosphere, it is that passion yeah. behind them, it brings them out of themselves. Yeah. But it's just the, the violence that suddenly yeah. come into it. But in some ways, I don't know that that is really football. I think a lot of that came in when we had this generation of, of, of parents who were soft on their kids, discipline broke down in the home, and football's just another platform to be violent in. And, uh, At the time it was yeah. a platform, it was a national sport, it was always in the spotlight, and they mm. could cause trouble, and they could get no yeah. try, that was the yeah. thing. And I think of a lot of it in the 70s, you had all the strikes, the minor strikes, That's and all this right, type yeah. of stuff. Oh, yeah, so the whole yeah. social structure at the time was, it was a melting pot of disorder. Yeah. It wasn't just a football, but be no. it, because football was a national sport, yeah, that's right, it yeah. took a lot of the, it, it yeah. got a lot of the, you know, the, the, yeah, the yeah. comeback from it. Uh, yeah, and it's just a, a, a vehicle for, for their hatred, really. Yeah. But, but yeah. I, I know lots. I know lots of. I know lots of, Southampton fans. Yeah. I mean, we call them scummers and all that. But I love, I love the passion. I'm always taking yeah. the Mickey and I. Even my solicitor, I've had to use him on a couple of occasions. Yeah. He's a Southampton fan, <laughs> so it's really quite funny, really. Like yeah. I've been defended by a Southampton fan. Yeah. But I got a funny story to tell you. It was once when yeah. we played Swindon away, I couldn't get anyone to drive my bus, and I got a friend who is a Southampton fan, mm -hmm. and I said, "Look, mate, would you drive?" They're only at Swindon. I yeah. said, "I've got many bus loads of theirs. We want to go yeah. to Swindon for the game. I can't get a driver. I've only fifty quid." 
And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, but don't tell them I support them. And I go, of course I won't. So he gets out of the game, he gets out of there, he gets in the pub, and of course I get a bit boozy. Yeah. He tells him, guess who's driving the bus? <laughs> and they all wanted, they all wanted yeah. to jump on him. I said, yeah. hold on, I said, how are you going to get home? And they said, oh. <laughs> by, but to cut a long story yeah. short, by the end of the night, they're all friends. Yeah. And everyone had a drink together. And he, he came on, the cut, he actually came yeah. to a couple of Bombay games then. Yeah. But that's what football's yeah. about. And this, a lot of it gets hyped up by the media. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you're right. Because yeah. they, want, they want the disorder, they want because it sells right. papers. Mm. And, and the same with this, this bubble. I mean, I reckon that is, I mean, there's no way I will ever be able to go there ever again to Fratton Park to see a game, because at my age, I can't get in a bus and sort of be held back and that. I mean, I need to go to the toilet, you know, for, for a start, and I, and I need, you know, and I couldn't, and then again, you see, you go with the away fans, you've virtually got to stand up. I can't stand up for 90 minutes anymore. So in some ways it's killed Away games I just don't really. like I just don't like this bubble thing because I just yeah. think it's against all human rights. Yeah, if I'm honest. Yeah, right. mm. yeah. And uh, at the end of the day, a good example was um, West Ham and Mill on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, look at that 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 rivalry's fierce, and look at the trouble they've had. But they didn't have a yeah. bubble trip. People were allowed to go to the game on their own. Yeah. It's the way you police it, yeah. and it, it, it can be done. But to me, it's the easy option for the police. They take an easy option, trampling over everyone's civil liberties. Yeah. But the trouble with football fans, as you know, they haven't got any rights. No. If there's any, if there's any um, group of people in society that haven't got any rights, it's football fans. Mm. They, yeah. they, they just seem to get trodden on by the authorities all the time. I know they haven't helped themselves in the past, but I think a lot of the authorities now live in 20 years in the past. Mm. You don't get violence in football grounds anymore. No. You might get it on the streets and that, but it's yeah. not like it used no. to be. No. But I, you know, I, I just like if before the next home Saints game, you know. We could come in and say, yeah, let's really patently go for our team. But when the game's over, let's not have the violence. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't like, I mean, I take my grandchildren with me. And the last home game, you know, I'll say it probably be his 4-1, didn't I? Um, 24 um, for the 4 yeah. five, five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, I would have my two grandchildren with me, my son. And fortunately, we weren't actually parked in the stadium car park. I usually get stadium car park pass mm. because I go in early for every game and take the uh, yeah. corporate hospitality um, guests on oh, wow. special tours, pre pre match tour. And um, but in that game, we were parked because I came went down my son. We were parked further down the road on an industrial estate. Mm. And yeah, when the violence broke out after that. My granddaughter were with me in the car, and I mean, we had to lock the car. And I just sat there and just watched them all run up and down, and they were hurling bricks and, and wheel hubs and all that. You know, and I thought, you know, do I really want football? But I can't live without my football. No. I ate my fix. You know, no, I know, you know, I know exactly where you come from. And it, it, violence has got yeah. no part of playing football. No. If, if only we could get the fans to say, yeah, let's. I don't like the word hate because we don't really mean it. I don't say like. Well, it's all, part, it's all part of the battle. Yeah, but that's the it's... word hate they use. But okay, if on the day you want to hate each other, okay. But after the game, let's. For 90 let's, minutes. Yeah, well, let's, go, yeah. let's go home safely and not have. Uh, I don't want to have a, a rock thrown through my car or at me on the head or anything. And no more than any bomby bait up. Well, this, 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 see, a lot of this is all a myth because I've been. I go to every single game in Pompey home and away, and I, I've got. In my phone, I've got numbers of virtually groups of lads from virtually every club in the country, and even in the late 80s and early 90s and middle 80s, I was going, we were mixing with the fans, and after the game, we were drinking with them, yeah. even if we'd lost and they had lost. And, but that never got that side of it never gets reported. No, no. no. One punch is oh, thrown, nice. and they're on it. No, they don't, they don't yeah. like that. But the media don't like it. And no. The media's got a lot to answer for, I oh, think. Yeah. Not, they, 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 they actually create the problem sometimes, yeah. they build up the animosity. They build it up, build it up before the game, and then it's yeah. And then That's it all what gets I've let often loose. said, you know, if only the newspapers would, would help to play it down a bit. If they'd like to report, like the fact that you and I sat together and had a chat, mm. you know, a, a sensible chat. I mean, um, but you see, this is not news. This is yeah. not, you know, this. Uh, if if you and I don't. Scrap out there, but look at your size. I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not taking it. But if we'd had a fight in the car park, right? It'd be news, wouldn't it? No, exactly. But the trouble yeah. is, that you and me, we love our football, and we're proper yeah. football fans, and yeah. it, it wouldn't matter. 
you're a Samson yeah. fan, I'm a Pompey fan, but yeah. it's, we're football fans, and that's, that's what it's right. all about. Yeah, we've got our allegiance. And for 90 minutes on, on, a, on a, when we play, I swear we'd be yeah. like that. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's all part and parcel. It's oh, like yeah. you say, it's the emotion. Yeah. But there again, you, you, you... And the stewarding didn't help either, does no. it? Well, we got a steward here, haven't we? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, he's, he's half a pop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, the fact that some of the stewards get so... Um, I think they're frightened the fans instead of being... Well, know, I think some of the times, if I'm honest, I feel that the, some stewards get a bit of a power trip. That's right. They, yeah. They've got this authority for a day, and they, yeah. some of them have got really mundane jobs, blah, blah, blah. They get this bit yeah. of authority, and they like to push themselves yeah. about. But, but that's only... That's only, again, that's it's only, only a few. few but yeah. a few miss it up for the rest. Like, yeah, what right. do they say about bad apples can burn that's up? That's right, yeah. You were saying about knowing fans. I, now that I actually moved to Swanmore to be near the grandchildren, son, daughter and all, um, we actually lived next door to a Pompey fan, died in the war. She's a widow now, oh, and her and her husband used to be um, at, you know, Ireland Pompey fans, and um, she hadn't got Sky, and I said to her, not long after we moved in there, I said, because um, we got really friendly with her, she's about 87, 88, yeah. like and um, I said to her, yeah, Pompey's on Sky tonight, come in and watch, you know. She said, no, I said, why not? She said, my language, she said. <laughs> <coughs> Lovely. <laughs> that, 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 that wouldn't worry me one little bit. I said, I've served in the RAF. I said, I've, and I've been a Saints fan for years. I've, I've heard worse language than what you probably can speak. But she's still never coming to watch oh, the talk. Bless her. She's coming for coffee and we're coming and we'll have a chat. But she said, no, I like to sort of listen to it on the radio. And, and curse and, and have a moan and that, but she said she wouldn't come in to watch it on, on I expect she'd have felt embarrassed about it, so yeah. in front of you, that's the thing. A few people in the village are Pompey fans yeah. and they know I'm Saints fans and I mean I've got a mate who's about the same age as me and he's been supporting Saints at Pompey for probably as long as I have. I first went to the Dell in 1940 really? during the war. Fantastic. So that was, I was 10 then so that's 71 years ago now. Fantastic. And, um, I hardly miss a game. I'm, I don't go to all, like I say, all the away no, games, no, but home games, um, I can't remember the last time I missed home. If I do, then name me knows I'm ill. <laughs> he had appendicitis once, right. and he said, in awful pain. And I thought, mm, I'll wait a little bit and see if he really is ill. Of course he was. He was in a terrible state. I kept putting off couldn't calling the doctor. Football, you see. Uh-huh. He couldn't go to football. So I knew he was, knew he was really <laughs> ill. So then I got the doctor and the ambulance and the rest. <laughs> So it took the but fact that he wouldn't go to football that yeah, you knew he was yeah. ill. And they <laughs> That's brilliant, that is. The doctor said, <laughs> he said, you were lucky, he said, that was just about the burst. That oh. would have been fair. And it was because I kept putting it off. Later. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have been here time of the day. I kept hoping that it would go away so I could go to the football. Yeah, yeah, I know there. exactly what you mean. Um, yeah, I don't like being ill. Well, that's, I, no, I love stories like that. Um, that just sums up a proper passionate football fan. Oh, yeah. You know, you were putting off all this pain because you wanted to go to the yeah, game. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Oh, what about the time he went on holiday? And, well, only to the Isle of Wight, admittedly. And uh, halfway through the week, he said, it's no good, he said. I've got to go back to Southampton. Oh, no, it was a meeting, wasn't it? We had, there was a meeting. Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah, so it was a meeting. So I said, well... How are you going to get back? He said, well, you can drive me to Cows. I'll get the boat over. And then I'll come back and you can come back and pick me up. I said, thanks a lot. <laughs> I did it, of course, <laughs> you know. There's about but, uh, nearly 11, 12 o'clock when I... Yes, because he missed the boat. Mobiles, you know, I said, you know, the, the, that I passed, the, uh, you know, or that 11 o'clock ferry, there's not an 11 o'clock ferry, it's half past 11. She was there, sat there. Sitting there patiently waiting. And you had to go to pub to use the toilet, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and that was a bit embarrassing. And the, right, you know, cows, yeah. right by the sort of, uh, well, I don't know, rougher sort of area. Yeah, we, like. I can imagine as well. Yeah. Yeah, but we. we, we oh, it's like always like that, though, mate, football. And yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, we, we, funny enough, we just got, um, there's, a, there's a gentleman I used to know, his name is Old Man Ken, yeah. and he's literally just died about, oh, in October time, and he, he died uh, He died uh, without any family, no next to kid, they had yeah. nothing, and uh, 
to cut a long story short, we've paid for the funeral and we're oh, having a charity game for him. Mm. But it was meant to be this Sunday just gone. Oh. But he was a character. I mean, I, I remember him when I was 12, 13, he was no different to the day he died. The cap and, the, and, and his pompey scarf. And he always used to sell the sports mails, true blues. Yeah. And if it, it, the stupid thing is, you'd buy a true blue and he'd come back, true blue, and he'd end up selling you another one. You'd say, I've got one, Ken, doesn't matter, have another one. <laughs> but he was brilliant. Everyone in Pompey knew him. And he was just one of those characters. Yeah. And he, he's, uh, but we're doing this charity game and people have got to pay to play because yeah. it's all going to go towards the yeah. towards the funeral. But the amount of youngsters that wanted to go and play, yeah. we've, got about, we've got a team of about 30 that want to play. Yeah. Good, and it's really it? no a testament yes. to the man. Yeah. And it's, uh, very good. But it's it, it's it's the old supporters shows, like him and yourself. Mm. Who, I mean, he, he followed them for seventy nine years. He was ninety two when he died, and he was in a wheelchair with bad legs and all this sort of stuff. I don't forget once he's uh, we we, got, we had a, we had a, it was about eight nine years ago. We had a tour down the west country, and he's run out. He goes, John, you going to football? You going down the west country for the week? And we goes, yeah, can he goes? Can I come with you? And I goes. No, Ken, you can't. We're all going to, there's going to be a load of lads, we're all going to be on, yeah. on the booze for the week. He says, Well, I'm going to come down on the train, and then I'm going to go back home, yeah. and I'm going to come down for the next guy. Yeah. And we were worried because he had all his legs. Anyway, to cut a long story, he'd come on, he come on the week with us. We yeah. had to take him every morning to get his leg bandaged yeah. up because yeah. we were worried about him coming down on the yeah. train. Yeah. But he was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And the, but the funniest thing was because we put him in with a friend of mine and his, and his wife, was. It was sighting him on. We've gone to the caravan, we've opened up the door, and there's Ken, stark naked, and there's Jim, our friend, who'd been looking in the caravan, washing him down, and just looking at us, shaking his head like this. Because oh, wow. <laughs> 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 they had to wash him and The stick oh. we got from that off Jim was really funny. <laughs> But, and the That's other thing nice, I was gonna, it shows the human side of people, yeah, exactly. doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Well, you, I respect you, you're the same, Herbie. It's yeah. like one big family. When, when, yeah. when you're fans together, it's like having a second family. Yeah. It yeah. really oh, is. Yeah. And well, you look out for yeah. each other. And yeah, yeah. Well, on, on the internet, they call me the father. No, there's right. one guy in Aus Australia who actually always emailed me and he calls me dad. And he came over with a group of us <coughs> for a stadium tour. And I met him. And he's one of these. He, his his language is really flowery, even on the internet. Of course, yeah. And he, um, but he's got a wonderful sense of humour. And um, when I first met him, he said, "Son," he said. And I look, and there was he, he's about six foot four. He was about six foot six square as well, you know. And he had a big black coat on, and an eye patch. He looked he came and he put he gave me a hug. We knew he squeezed the life out of me. But he was he was wonderful, Yolly, wasn't yes, he? And yeah. we, we we still keep in touch. But um uh, loads of fans have come from all over the world. No, it must, it must be nice to meet him when you oh, talk to him yeah, on the yeah, internet and, things, call, and yeah, to actually had, have the interaction yeah, with them face yeah, to face. We, we have these what they call internet saints. It's not the usual it's not the Saints web fans. Um some of those are so over the top, and, and half of them don't go to games anyway. Mm. A lot, there's a lot of youngsters on there, but this one is a, a, a this probably <coughs> a Saints fan, and it's mainly for overseas people, which these Italian Saints and Borders are a part of, and um, uh, and the Maltese Saints. We've got a Maltese Saints and Borders club, and um, yeah, we have the what we call Saints list tours, and they come over, and then. Um, yeah, they go out for a meal together. I don't normally go out with a meal with them in the evenings. They go out and they sort of stay the weekends and have a few beers and, and you know, and it's great. And then they get back home and they know. Yeah. But it must be, it doing. must make you quite proud that you've brought them over, shown them the coach, they've seen oh, the football, yeah. you're keeping yeah. them. And you're actually helping the club by getting more yeah. fans oh, yeah. involved. That's, yeah. That's what it's all about. Well, it's schools and all that. I tell you, there was a lovely story. Um, uh, it's about two years, three years ago now, I think it was. We there's a um, I don't know which there's a couple of Portsmouth colleges that come up for tours, and what they do it's 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 supposed to be nothing to do with football, but you can tell the, the teachers are, are football fans, and they have sort of clipboards and questions, and it, they they and they it, they more or less once a year they come up, they um they they uh, ask um questions about finance such as how you know, about revenue other than 
through the gate and how you know clubs are run and how much the stadium cost and and all that and they do a morning Bratton Park one lot uh, um, one lot comes to St Mary's in the morning and they swap over and um, this lot that was coming up in the morning one day um, they were late coming and we meet in what we call the Dow Cafe at the back of the stadium and um, it was absolutely bucketing it. The <laughs> rain was sheeting there. And one of the, the lads, you know, these, these are girls and boys, mm. about 15. And one of these lads said, don't go to Southampton Central. If we get off at St. Denny's, it's not far to the stadium. Mm. So they got off at St. Mary's, at uh, St. Denny's, and of course it was raining. And um, they asked somebody as they were going to say, yeah, can you tell us the way to get to St. Mary's? Yeah, he said. Of course, he wasn't thinking of the St. Mary's Stadium. He was thinking of the district of St. Mary's, <laughs> which is a bit further up. And he said, and right up through the town, almost up to the city centre and back there. Time that I got there, they were late. They were all ringing. With, <laughs> some of these girls were in their this school uniforms yeah. and, and some of the lads, you know, tough guys, you know, didn't wear a coat and all that. And they were shivering. And they weren't in any mood to have a stadium. <laughs> and tour. I can imagine And they were angry with this different route taking all right. Anyway, so I said, well, look, I had a radio and I, I radioed the, the guy in charge of the, um, what they call the supporters uh, representative. <coughs> and I said, look, can I get all these a nice hot cup of coffee? Yes, he said. And uh, anyway, we, they had a cup of coffee and they felt a bit better. And I said to one of these girls, I said, you're shivering. I said, look, have my coat. Of course, it's a badge on it, you know. And I, no, no, she said. I said, well, right, pizza's up, my dear, you know. Oh, yes, I will, she said. And then she put it on, she said, the boy, don't you dare take a photograph of me. And, <laughs> and we had him on the rain. And I had a, a radio call halfway rain from the chairman, and he said that when they finished, he said, um, take them into the Dell Cafe, and they could all have a meal each. Good. And I thought, that nice. never got in the papers. But that, that was when we had Rupert Lowe who used to get all the stick, you know, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, he, you know, he realised that um, you know, we were, that probably did more for St. Pompey relations and, and it's all, it's, all really the, it's all the little things behind the scenes that make a difference. Yeah. It's, it's, it's um, when it comes to a personal level, a street yeah. level. Yeah. But like you say, it's, things like that I don't get mentioned. Get, no. yeah. And well, if it's bad, that's, that's um, all the media seem to be interested in. Yeah. Yeah. They're not interested in good in anything. Whether it be football or anything now, I don't well, When I take these, like, Omni fans and that around, a lot of people take them, not the same fans. I talk football because I can talk football about any club, you know, even you know, the rubbish clubs like Arsenal, Chelsea, and all that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, you yeah, know, most of their players. And it was lovely. One day we had a group up. This was in the early days of when the stadium was opened, in, back in our premiership days. And when they came, the, um, they had, it was, some people from a ball school down near Weymouth uh -oh. and they had and it was some um, a, a sort of a, a reward for good behavior that if they behave themselves for a couple of weeks they would come on the tour of this premiership stadium and uh, none of them were Saint fans and um, they had a warder to every two boys there's supposed to have been 12 of them when they got there only 10 I said 12 uh, he said a couple of them blotted their copy book yesterday. He said so. No. Anyway, I went in. I, as they came in, I went to shake their hands, and most people shook their hands. One little, yeah, like that. They were all surly. And one of these warders said to me, he said, they're difficult. He said, and don't be shocked by their language. He said, you know, he said, these are hardened lads, you know. So anyway, we went around, and I started talking about football, talking about their teams and all that. And I showed them the dressing rooms and then we went up to an executive box and we were there. And they all crowded around and we were, I was talking about pitch sizes and I was saying hey, that Stoke sort of narrow their pitch, you know, and, and other teams sort of uh, have got, you know, wider pitches and, and all the difference and they're all talking about this. And the water was sat back and, and um, anyway, one of these days I said, you know, it costs um, £35,000 a season to have a box like this. I said, that's money, I've never seen that sort of money. I have, he says. I said, oh yeah, have you? And we just carried on. And when we were going out, this warder said to me, he said, he probably had, he said, he said, he probably his dad is a safe, he, oh, he said, my dad's a safe cracker. And he, and I said to Richard, he said, 
he was probably telling you the truth. He said, all these boys can ever boast about is how good a criminal <laughs> their parents are. But he said, I've never seen, he said, we've had these lads down there for two or three months, and he said, I've never seen them like this. He said, they were listening Listened. to you and talking to you. And when I went to go, even this one that wouldn't shake hands, we shook hands. Fantastic. And I thought, well, that is great, you know, and I don't know why. we. Football is the language of the people. Yeah. It can bring, like we were saying earlier, yeah. it just brings people closer, doesn't yeah. it? There's something about yeah. football. And everyone has their teams and passions and all this sort of stuff, whether it be club or international football. Yeah. But Everyone is just brought together yeah. by a round ball. Yeah. yeah. How did Amazing, you start isn't it? supporting? When, when did you first support Pompey? Uh, oh. I mean, this is this what you would call in the Pompey catchment area, or were you? Oh, born? Petersfield, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, big, big Pompey yeah. town, Petersfield. I mean, there's a couple of Sampton fans yeah. I can say live here, but um, I start. I was a late start. I was 13. I started supporting them in '76. Yeah. But I'd, the first game was in '76. But I'd actually gone. It was when. <coughs> you lot were in the cup final. Right. Yeah. And everyone, was, everyone, was, for you. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, so everyone was going on about, um, oh, Bobby and Stokes. this, and yeah. that, blah, blah, blah. And they all take the mick out of my mate, who was a Pompey yeah. fan, John Parrott, he lives in Titchfield. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then we, we were at a boarding school, and uh, everyone was Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal, all this sort of stuff. And I thought, hold on a sec, they're all giving my mate Jim, and I thought, that's my local team. So I thought, hold on, I thought, I'm going to support this lot. So when we were getting relegated to the third, but I'm, I've never been worried about success. To me, it's no. where you're from, it's your identity. I couldn't support a team halfway out of the country. What's the point? Yeah. It has to be about where you're from. Yeah. Yes. You have the empathy with it then, don't That's you? That's right. Are you listening, lads? <laughs> <laughs> and it was, and from that day on, I went to my first game Boxing Day on, on 76. And it was just brilliant. We'd been getting crowds of 10, 12,000, but we had Brian at home. And obviously, a local dog, we had 32,000, and I just the atmosphere was it was the atmosphere that yeah, got me. Yeah. I just went bang from that moment on. I thought, I want this for the rest of my life. I knew from that moment I wanted it for the rest of my life. Yeah. And then I used to scrive off school every minute I could because yeah. I was at boarding school, but, right. but we used to have to work on Saturday mornings and then do sports in the afternoon. Mm. But I used to, I could, so you really didn't have time to go then, did well, you? I, I could do the home Apart games from, and oh, I could right. do like a couple of local yeah. games. So, yeah. what happened was, I used to, but it was prefects who used to tick your names yeah. off mm. for the sports. So I used to buy them a packet of fags and yeah. in the morning and they'd tick my name off. And I'd say to my mum, because meet me outside the school gates. I'm got, I've got off school early, you know, sports yeah. this afternoon. But she couldn't understand why I was always outside the school gates. Because <laughs> I wasn't meant to be going. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't tell her that to her. I was straight yeah. down the foot. I could go to places like all the shot and things like that. Yeah. But we had lessons in the morning. But, oh. And uh, I remember once I got a knife. And I got a knife and cut my leg open because we had Norwich in the cut. And I was desperate mm -hmm. to go to the game. I thought, I'm not playing sports. Cut my leg open, had it all bandaged up, went down the game, it was called off because of the snow. <laughs> and I was off in the middle of the I'd have stitches in my legs. Oh, I was, I was so you're going to say you ended up in hospital, yeah. so you didn't get there. <laughs> I, was, I was 14 at the time when I did that. Yeah. But yeah. it's just like when it gets you and it's that passion. Yes. And, it's, yeah. you, and it's to me, it's not about, football's never been about, obviously you want the win, and you. but to me it's more than that, it's been part of something. It's, yeah. it's been, Belonging, isn't it? And it's, it's an entertainment, you go to enjoy yourself on a Saturday yeah. afternoon. And all these people who go on about, oh, if we don't win, and they're, they're obsessed with winning. Yeah. And if you're not winning, they moan and groan. Oh. You think, oh, and there's more to it than that. Yeah. Not every team yeah. can win. Well, no, that's right. I, I don't like the moaners. No, I hate I them. mean, I, I don't sit, obviously, I don't go in the northern, you know. <laughs> I'll like, oh, have to stand up and they couldn't stand that any. And I don't yell and shout. I mean, I'm as passionate as you, but, yeah, yeah, but in a different way. But again, yeah. I mean, I come from a different. Era. era anyway. Yeah, yes. I mean, when I first went to football in the the 1940s during the war, you you didn't have such a thing as replica shirts. No. Um, the only thing that you had to identify you as supporting a, a football team was a scarf, and usually or a rosette yeah, if yeah. it was a cup. And I mean, mine was red and white, but couldn't afford to buy one. You had to have it knitted, yeah. and, and mine became red and pink. <laughs> yeah, this was long before yeah. washing machines. They just went in the border with the old, you know, and, and uh, yeah, that's that was sort of how I started, and then no long, no sooner had it just started, and then celebrities started getting bombed, and and the Dow got bombed, mm. and I don't know if you know, but um, we had a cup tie, and um, Pompey said, well, you know, you can't play it on your pitch, come to Fratton Park, so we actually played a home game. 
at Fratton Park oh, I know that. in the 40s and the Sage fans went there and quite a few Pompey fans came along as well to support. Well, I, well I, know, I, know, I know obviously people of your generation as well and I know a lot of them, they used to watch Pompey one week and say, well, that's exactly they, what you Because they, exactly they, they, they couldn't afford to go to the away games well, and that was the norm. But this, mm. this hatred thing's really... It started in the late 60s, early mm. 70s, because the whole country was at the low end, wasn't yeah. it, with yes. all the strikes yeah, and things. Right. And, it was, mm. and it was, like you say, it was the hippie movement and all that, and yeah. everyone was anti-everything. Yeah. So everyone was anti-this, anti-government, anti-this. Mm. So when it came to football, it just, football was a natural mm. vehicle for it to carry yeah. on with. Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying about sport and probably one week. When I was a teenager, um, I used to go to Bradden Park one week, and down the other, really? as much as that, because I, I lived in Swadling, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I used to get a train down to Fratton and just walk. And um, it was because in those days there was no television. Mm. Um, you heard of the good players like the, the good Bobby Brown, Ray Fowler, Froggett, all that lot, uh, Peter Harris, and so forth. And also, yeah, I'd heard of Sandy Matthews, mm. Tom Finney, and all yeah, that. Yes, and I saw them on cigarette cards. We used to have cigarette cards, I used to save all the footballers. But I'd never see them because in Hampton were in the third division. Mm. Pompey were flying high in the first division. So I used to go down there to watch them, <laughs> you know. But if Pompey lost, okay, you know, I, you know I'd like Dortmund, you know. But Saints lose, I mean, exactly. Yeah, cool. yeah, that I understand. But, I mean, uh, but that was your only chance, uh, like you say, of seeing the players, seeing the games. Seeing, right. I can, I can, cause you, like you say, you didn't have telly, so right. there was another way of doing it. But now you can't be neutral, can you? If I wanted to go to Fratton Park and watch a game, well, it's certainly at the Dell anyway, um, at St Mary's rather, it's either home or away section. Um, it's, it's I think where, it's where do you go if you want to? This same game, you know, no, no. And you've got to be on a database to get a ticket at St Mary's. So, um, I, you know, I, I you know, a, a neutral really cannot go to St Mary's to watch a game. They've got to state whether they are home or away. Yeah. And they've got to be in the home section or the away. away. And, and, and my ticket says, I've got a season ticket, I've got two season tickets, it says home section. Mm. Uh, and, you know, so, um, that has lost a little bit of the, because um, during the war again, the, the, we used to have the wartime games, and Saints and Bombay, because there was no petrol and trains were no, not running, they were all for the military and that, used to, Christmas and Boxing Day, used to play, well for a couple of years anyway, you had played on a home game at the Dow on Christmas Day, the away game at Boxing Day, and then the next year it was home on mm. day at Fratton Park on the Christmas Day and, and at the old Dell and the Box Day. And all the sailors used to come and they would all support, no matter where they came from, they would all support Poppy. Mm. So the natural thing was for all the RAF and particularly the Army, because there's a load of Army people stationed at Salisbury Plain, they naturally said, My, well, we're going to support Southampton, you know. Yeah. And they were stood by side yeah. and they'd all had a few tots and, and beers. But you had no trouble whatsoever. And I don't know, this is probably before your time, but in the early days, the referee always used to leave the football on the spot at the end of a game. League game, whatever it was, game, game, always left the ball out there, they walked off. And of course, the surgery used to come on, they'd have a kick around, and you know, it was not sides, it was just they, whoever got the ball first kicked it and tried to score a goal. And the referee came out, and they go and they put the ball back in the middle and get back over. I mean, you can't imagine, I mean, there were no such thing as stewards. I can't remember when I first saw a steward. I mean, um, how did we ever get on with a steward? We, we didn't, Nick. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we keep the phone. Yeah. It's all his fault. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no. It's, it's it, like, how did referees ever get on with eight fourth officials? But or crowd, managers, rather. But crowds, I, I think people were better behaved and they had better manners. They, they had more respect and everything. And crowds used to be self-controlling. And yeah. uh, but there's all this... Uh, rebelliousness and all this yeah. violence out there, and people, a lot of people just haven't got respect anymore. That's yeah, half yeah. the thing. You, well, if we wanted to hate it. anyone, we hated the Germans because they bombed our yeah. heads, you know, not, not yeah, exactly. Not the fuckers, okay. And I think, I think then as well with, with all the cities and the football, people were more you know after the war and having to stick together, people were more united. Yeah, they all to move around. So you didn't have your allegiances, but yeah. now because it's all, it's all. It's bonkers. I mean, it it is good in a in a stadium situation where you get the two sets of fans, like you were saying, and yeah. you get the passion, and you get. Oh yeah. 
yeah. but it's when it spills out into the streets and it's and you get the idiot I, I, i've never understood it no. i've loved the passion of it i've always loved it i've loved the banter and, and uh, i mean the air's always been blue at football yeah, yeah. even in the in, in the early days there's always been bad language i yeah. think that's always been part and parcel of it but it's uh, I, I don't think it's anything you're going to change but now it's going from one extreme it's gone from it's going now to the grounds are getting sterile yeah, they're trying yeah. to do away. You got, you got. You, yeah, they you can't, can't say this. You can't. They can't even let the lads have a little few beers. You know. Oh, I, know. I mean, and you get this, and like, you know, yeah, it, it, it. You're all well. Like I said, when even the Millwall, my fifty-year-old, any one day fifty-year-old mate with him, they wanted to go away from us as near as they could to Millwall. Fred. And directly the steward said to me, "Is that your grandson?" My first thought was, "Oh my god, what did he say?" Because I said to him. Be careful what you say and what you sing, because I said you never know if a steward hears you. Particularly, we only had I mean, it was a bitterly cold night, and nobody was really interested. And um, you know, everything you said could be heard, you know. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm sure what he done there, you know. You just think you think the worst. Got to be so careful you of what they you. say, you know. They might just say something that, you know, twenty other things. Pretty, Trouble is in the moment. Said, but in, they've in, heard him, you know. In the moment and the passion, you can say the wrong thing. We all yeah. said we all said it at football, and so you know, that's the thing that annoys me. You get a player, they often blind on the pitch. Yeah. And nothing happens, or they get a one match ban, and a, a fan does it, and he can get banned for three years. Yeah. And I just yeah. that doesn't make yeah. sense. And it's the fans who make the game what it is. Yeah. But well, the, I mean, if if you and I were to walk on, on when Saints play Pompey, a steward would go absolutely. Mad if he suddenly saw me walk up to you and we went to check no. out. Yeah. Get away! Get they never. I told a funny yeah. story. We we got up to we know all these walls lads and this was in the, was in the eighties and we were drinking the Great Western at walls yeah. and there was about forty of us and there was about forty walls and we all knew each other and uh, I mean a lot of my mates looked the part you know skinheads and all this yeah. sort of stuff and there was all they they looked the part as well but we were just having a drink it was really great anyway both groups walked up to the ground we we all boozy we had a drink. And we all, I put a Wolves hat on, someone else put Pompey hat on, and we all mixed up, and the police come charging up the road, and we're all singing our different yeah. songs. And they've come running up the road, and they got and they just stood back because they couldn't understand that Wolves fans. Yeah. And they were going, what's up with you? Like, you're not fighting. We go, oh, yeah. We're having a drink. Yeah. Kind of football, isn't that what yeah. it's about? And they were completely, they just didn't know what yeah. to do. Yeah. And of course, we, we offered to fight with them. Yeah. Yeah, well, we good. made it worse, and we, we went yeah. in the turnstiles, gave each other a good But we'd yeah. been doing that for a couple of seasons prior yeah. to that, anyway. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what it's all. That's what it's always been about to me. I've, I've always said the best nights when you go away games is you wake up with a sore head in the morning, but you know you've had a good time, yeah. rather than wake up with yeah. a sore head and think, oh, I don't want to go back there yeah, again. You can't remember what the score is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it, no, it's. Uh, but I, I just, it, football to me, I'm a bit disillusioned with. I mean, I never stopped watching Pommy yeah. ever and ever. Yeah. But I'm a bit, I, in ways, I fall out of love with it a bit with all the, yeah. the money, the corporate, yeah. the foreign ownership. They just don't, and the man in the street, the actual man in the street, is getting driven out of football. Yeah. The money involved, and it's all been paid by the man in the street, and they can't afford it. I know lads who've, who've followed Pompey for 30, 40 years. Yeah. They got in the Premiership and they stopped going, just couldn't afford it. They were yeah. just priced out yeah, of it. Right, ridiculous yeah. prices. Yeah. I actually prefer, if I'm honest, I don't miss the Premiership. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm you've going, said that, I'm haven't exactly, you? I've said that you've often. You've said that. Because mm. we know we're going, you know, we go. To the, when we were in League One, yeah, we were going to games at the game in, in the Championship. We know that we could win it, but whenever we, when we were in the Premiership, I used to go fearing that we might lose. Yeah, yeah. And, and that somehow took a little bit, and also again, as you say, there was all the corporate and that. Uh, admittedly, I had a good job during those days because I was the uh, the agent officer for visiting um, players, <coughs> who, you know, ex-players and. Oh, I, had, I, I had to chaperone Tommy Smith oh, right. uh, when we played Liverpool and get him to the the TV station out there and over to the supporters club and and into the various lounges and um, that must have been interesting. Chop, though, Chopper Harris oh, yeah. and oh, there were so many of them and it was uh, I don't remember having a Pompey player. I wonder why. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we, we forgets did, about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Selective if, if memory. We, if, we did, <laughs> if, I, if we did, I forget who it was. But um, no, it, it, it. I mean, these players were getting paid. I think it was three hundred pounds just to come along to go to watch a game, 
in the best hospitality seats and and just go to the radio station have an interview and say the same old things that you and I could have spoken for them anyway you know but um, you know, that that in some ways that I know it was nice because that was maybe giving some money back to some of the old timers who probably could need it there but um, yeah well, money, didn't know money, money, today. Money, money is killed the game as far as I'm concerned the money the players get now we've seen yeah, uh, the, man, the money the players get. Trouble, it's all creamed off by the players and managers and the managers and the chairman. And the man in the street is people that was, I mean, I'm, I'm completely, my, my personal debt is ridiculous. I'm thousands of pounds, oh, my yeah. mum's over here, me, I'm yeah. thousands of pounds in debt. Yeah. And it's like, because, it's all because of football. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be in debt if it weren't for football, and it's cost yeah. me lots of other things. And then you look at these people and you think, well, we're fine. At, we're funding their lifestyle, yeah, right, yeah. and we're doing it because we genuinely love the club. Yeah, yeah. And they're doing it just because they want to get greedy. Yeah. But they, like, they, but they kiss the badge, and oh. the next week they're transferred to another club. And they're kissing they? that badge. Okay, yeah. But yeah. like you said, the Premier. you run out of film, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like you said about the, the Premiership, I don't miss the Premiership because yeah. you, you hit the nail on the head, and that's the reason why I like yeah. it. In the Championship, everyone can beat each other. Yeah. It's a proper football competition. Yeah. But in the Premiership, you know at least five teams, you're not going to beat them. No. You might get the odd occasional result against them. Yeah. But that's not what football's about. No. And that's usually down to a referee. You're going to yeah. get on the referees too, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> don't, oh, don't. Some of them. But they are definitely one sided in the Premiership. The top four get protection without any doubt. Uh, right. And how that, how someone has never brought that up in a court of law that it's four, uh, it's yeah. so obvious. And you look at the statistics. They wouldn't, they wouldn't do anything to them. No, much. they wouldn't but do anything to In the much. Premiership, at Southampton, I know that you've probably heard about it. Saints were playing Manchester United back in the old doubt and mm. like at Bratton Park we used to intimidate because yeah, really you know, um, Roy Keane said he hated playing at the Dow because he could hear everything that people called him yeah. and it was too close and if he hit someone you know they usually go out and went over the wall or something. <laughs> but um, he, he, uh, um, we were playing Manchester United and we were winning 2-0 at half time uh, you know because we'd intimidate them mm. and in the second half, they came in in totally different colour shirts. They were playing in this sort of greyish shirt to start with. In the second half, they came out and they were in blue and yellow stripes. And I've never heard of it before or since. And I'm sure that there's no such thing in the football league where you can change your colour you at half time. And he asked, he said um, he changed the colour because he felt that his players, because the grain was so small and they were in these grey shirts, they couldn't find each other. They couldn't see each other <laughs> against the background. Lovely, we still won 3 1, so we, you know, but I suppose he said, well, we drew the same half, you know, but we still beat them 3 1. Um, but only Fergie could get away with that. You shouldn't be able to do that because that yeah. could have an effect of well, I mean, changing I the game psychologically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's a. I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, Alex yeah. Ferguson, at the end of the day, best football manager that's ever graced this these yeah. shores. But as a person, he's got a lot to be desired. Like, yeah. He's just so. I know he's totally committed to his club, yeah. but he's got no grace sometimes. Uh, and he's uh, a moan. He's a he's a bully. He's a yeah. bully. He bullies the refs. And he, but he knows if he bullies them or bullies them, that's next the time they're going to think, "Oh, we don't want to yeah. go for all that again." Yeah. 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 It's like to hear a manager sometimes say, "Well." Okay, we give it our best shot. But exactly. And just honestly, we weren't good enough. Exactly. But not very many many yeah. managers say that. They yeah, usually got an excuse. They blame it on everybody yeah, and like, everything. And they yeah. say, "Hold on, yeah. we were watching this game. Yes, we've seen that. But hold on, just be a man about it and accept it." Yeah. But everyone, it's all like school children, though. The managers yeah. and players. You now, you listen to you listen to all the telly pundits and all this, and it's like a bunch of kids talking. It's like yeah. old women. I'm yeah. Sorry, I don't mean that. Yeah. <laughs> Watch your language. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you won't have that. Oh dear. Oh, like, like, like a lot of old women. That's why. Yeah, that's why. That's what you want, isn't it? Yeah. Trust me to put my foot in it. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Anyway. I do. No, it's 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 not like. It's meant to be a man's game, and you all these like on Sky and all this mm. type of stuff, and they waffle on about things that I know they've got TV time to fill up, but a lot of it is just inane rubbish. Yeah, yeah, oh. and it's the same with these. Um, uh, you get these reporters. We've got like a obviously you've got one at Fratton Bar. Yeah, we've got your media sort of mm. desk because we've got the little desk, and my two teams are not that far in front of them, mm. and yet. I get my paper on a Sunday morning and I think, but 
for that. The guy, <laughs> the guy for that. And it's the same with the managers. You can get two managers being interviewed, and one will say, "Well, we we uh, we controlled the game, and we you know we we got that, we we got the win, you know." And the other one say, "Well, we were unlucky to win because we we controlled most of the game, and we." Uh, and you think, I know they've got to support our 